So 15 years ago, United Way um, joined a partnership with 20 other organizations and created a, uh, an organization called the Alamo Area Community Information System, which is now Community Information Now. Community Information Now. CINow.info is actually the website. <coughs> the reason we did that is we knew we were entering the information age. We knew we needed better data for planning and for evaluation and for grant writing. And so as the years have passed, this <coughs> website has become more and more sophisticated, relies heavily on census data, and now the census website has caught up in its user friendliness. You're going to be just amazed at how intuitive it is <coughs> uh, and, and how much they've listened to all of us who need data for our planning, for our evaluation, for our assessment of community well-being. So the, the reason that we're, we're co-sponsoring this is because as United Way, we're going to be increasingly <coughs> data-driven in our decisions and we're going to be looking at the data that you're using to evaluate your programs, to assess the need, um, to mark progress. So, but if we're going to expect that of you, we're also very committed to making sure you have the tools to do that. So this combination of the census and community information now is a powerful combination. And you're going to be just amazed. And you're going to be actually um, amazed and frustrated because you're going to start and then it's only going to be three and a half hours and you're going to want more. So at the end of this session, we're going to ask you, how do we proceed? Because we know this is the tip of the iceberg and that once you really get into it, you're going to have more questions. So Pauline with the census has advanced courses. We can bring her back down. We can get CNOW together uh, with us and help us walk through this data um, rich resource we have through the census and CNOW. So uh, I'm going to head out, but I want to uh, thank Pauline for being here from Denver. Denver, where it's much cooler, and see now uh, for hosting. And Nowcast, our partner, is a a live streaming, <laughs> screaming, internet-based community forum. And so Nowcast makes all these trainings available to people who can't be here. It makes virtual and distance uh, learning a possibility now for us, for all of us. So. Uh, Nowcast, you'll hear a little bit more about them later, but they are a resource for you as well. So, so consider Nowcast in your in your trainings. All right. So, Pauline, welcome. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to put down the mic. Is that okay? You know, I thought yeah, I can. I've got one on there, so I don't have to. Thank you, Mary Ellen. And I just wanted to say thank you again to Celia and to Stephanie uh, for setting up everything, having the handouts that you have for ACOG for having a computer lab because we were, at, as you know, we were at a different location yesterday. So I have a few concepts up there that I wanted to go over, but I want to see who's in the room today. And um, we also will have some people on the internet, but they'll be invisible to us, okay? So this is kind of a cool group because we're, hi, good morning, we're just starting. So, um, let me have you introduce yourselves. Tell me um, who you are and what organization and one thing you'd like to learn today. Um, I'm Jessica Carpenter from the Big Sisters of South Texas. Um, I'm the grant writer there. I've been that for a couple of years. Um, and I've actually tried to use the census website before and it's just kind of gotten overwhelmed and bogged down. And so um, I'm hoping to just figure out how to get a handle on it um, and get community level data. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. I always, uh, you know, I have to confess that uh, one of my favorite, uh, Celia or Stephanie, do you want to introduce yourselves or you know everyone? I'm Celia, I'm 
Stephanie Martinez, and I'm with Community Information Ellis Okay, and they've been very helpful. Um, I have my little board up here, and so I first want to do a disclaimer, but it doesn't look like you guys. Sometimes when I have these use of census for grant writing, people say, well, I wanted to learn how to do grants. And really what this is, you guys have been doing this as far as grant writing, but this is putting the meat to the bones, so to speak. And so today, we're going to look at a, a different concepts, data set, data products. We're going to anchor our data and geography. We're going to see when you use the American Community Survey, Census 2010. And then uh, uh, some concepts as far as poverty, household, income and earnings. And then I wanted to, there's this like very simple question that I ask grant writers, you know, kind of how we proceed is how many children in my neighborhood? So if you're looking at this, how many children in my neighborhood, to answer this, you're looking at what are you calling children? For example, if you're writing, something about children, if you're writing Head Start, you're interested in what? Five and below. If you're, if you're writing for school districts or youth programs, you're interested possibly in, if it's youth programs, mid-school and above, and it's, if it's school-age children, it's at a certain age group. So age becomes very important here, and describing who the children are. My neighborhood. Census data is always anchored in geography. Are you talking about a census tract, which is comparable to a neighborhood? Are you talking about the city of San Antonio, Bear County? Are you talking about several census tracts within an area around uh, Big Brothers, uh, or where do you have your Big Brothers or Sisters? Is it Big Brothers, Big Sisters? Where do you have them around the metropolitan area? So a neighborhood can be different things. And then always you're counting how many, what's the impact, correct? And then at what time period, okay? And so we're going to kind of take apart that question and, and fill in the blanks, so to speak, because I have both a business development, marketing, and grant writing background. I used to run a, um, a loan fund. Uh, and so I've written many a grants, pleaded, begged, whatever, whatever, however you want to say. But the way I look at today's grant writing is very competitive, for one. Believe me, when I hold these, uh, I've held them in El Paso, down the border, now in San Antonio. A lot of people are here. And they're, uh, and I always feel they get an edge. I really do. Of course, why am I going to say I'm the instructor? But no, seriously, I do because you can't go to, uh, the United Way just said, we're going to expect data. And if you say, well, I got the best available well, because I couldn't pull up the census data, that's not good enough. And so what's important is, that you position your, uh, whoever you're writing about, you're actually saying, what's unique about this? Is, are you writing to someone in Austin? Are you writing to someone in California or New York, D.C., as far as foundations? Are you writing to the feds, which are very specific and um, have certain guidelines? And uh, many times I have grant writers from local governments. And so, it's important that you describe as accurately as possible why your community, why your clientele needs funds. Okay? So that's what we're about today. All right. So then I first wanted to, how many of you have used the census.gov? Like this? I, you have? Oh, I, I like this. <laughs> okay. Are you all from El Paso? Because in El Paso, everybody uses their hands, <laughs> you know? It's like, I, I, one time this woman told me, you're from El Paso, I, get, I said, yeah. And she said, um, I said, how did you know that? She goes, oh, because El Paso people would always use their hands. And I know there's certain hand gestures, you know? And I don't want to tell you some of the ones that uh, are used. <laughs> but this is like mas o menos, you know, right? Mas o menos. Okay. So census.gov, I have to tell you that the last two years, don't feel bad because there's been so many changes. We've really tried to update census.gov. This is the new website, okay? The new being as of January of this year. We've updated the American Community Survey that has social economic characteristics, which we'll learn about more later. We've updated that narrative profile as of March. 
We uh, uploaded, uh, as of January, all our Census 2010 data, which we went through a whole process last year, try teaching that, throughout a whole process of transition. We now have American Fact Finder, which used to, we had legacy. So it's real, you know, we've just gone through an enormous amount of change, and I usually co-teach this with a colleague of mine who has had 40 years in census, and in his estimation, these last two years have been the most, there's been the most change in our data. So that's why we're having a, a lot of people saying, you know, can't get through it, it's very complicated. And we're trying our best to have more user friendly. So the word filter I should have put up there too, because today really what you're trying to learn is filtering. If you can kind of think about, I'm always trying to get down to the, the table, to the data, that will help me tell my story, okay? And so hopefully today you'll gain some tips and tricks on how to do that. But we always like, and, and bear with me because I have to like find this, because I can't see it here. So I'm kind of like, oh, here we go. Where did it go? So, uh, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Oh, here we go, okay. Okay, all right. So then, if you see people, wait, let me see if I can get, yeah. If you see people, if you, you know, we, we have always these navigation tabs, and they always have all this information, all you ever want to know about geography, all you want to know about data, we have research, working papers, and newsroom, which we have um, a lot of different tip, sh tip sheets and what have you for the media. However, today we're going to focus mostly on data and then on geography, okay? So I'm going to go first, with the help of my little tricky mouse, uh, we're going to do two simple searches and then we're going to move on to more detailed searches, okay? And I, I'm a person that likes to do application. I, I'm not just one that glorifies data for data sake, but I really like to say, how do you use this? How can you use this, all right? So let's first go to Quick Facts. It's on the left hand. Does anybody use Quick Facts? I like Quick Facts a lot because it is something, uh, in about a month, I'm going to work with uh, staff for state legislators. And legislator policymakers like this a lot. But how can grant writers use Quick Facts? OK, so let's click on, you can either click on Texas or you can select Texas either way. So quick facts is what? It's a fact sheet. It's a plain, easy fact sheet that's a click away. It can be used for a community as low as 5,000 people, okay? So I don't know if, uh, do you work with any, how many of you work just within the metropolitan area of San Antonio? Just San Antonio? Just San Antonio for the health assessment? Bear okay, Bear County. And I haven't seen what the CDPs are in Bear County. But so whatever you have in Bear County as far as cities and towns like Alamo Heights, uh, t you know, those will be in here separately. Okay? So then state of Texas, as you can see, it starts giving you all the population. But let's make it a little bit more interesting and let's select the city. So I'm going to select San Antonio. So go ahead and select San Antonio. And then we'll look at that. By the way, also, if I'm going too fast, we're a real friendly group t this morning, so say slow down or say, can you go over that again? That's fine. And I forgot to mention that this is very casual, so if you need a bio break before our break this morning, they're right down the hall. And then we do have a little snack room that has machines for like water and stuff. Okay. Bear with me, because San Antonio has a lot of cities. I mean, San Antonio, the state of Texas. Here we go, San Antonio. Okay, and then hit go. Okay, so then, I'm gonna walk over here so I don't have to always have a crook in my neck. You'll see me later on like this. <laughs> so, what I like about this is, first of all, it starts giving you data from Census 2010. All right, and then, you see, we've uploaded the 2011 estimate, what the population is when we took it for 2010. 
and then what's the percent change? So is San Antonio a city that's growing? And then it gives you also, like for example, I see this as a way to begin. Uh, for example, if you know, doing a health assessment, you'll want to see the whole uh, city. So you see these in health are vulnerable populations, right? Of uh, persons under five years and then persons 65 years and over. So you al already you know what the percentages of that population are. So I like that. Also, if you see here, population estimates base, uh, population estimate, what does that mean? And why is it different from this number? And what number do I use? Well, for cities and counties, you would use this number. Because what we do in the census, we take a census every 10 years, and that's the number there. However, every year we update that number with our population estimates program, where we subtract um, you know, out migration from immigration uh, into a city and look at births and deaths. So that's why this number is different. So we do update it in between the census, okay? So for a population of the city, you would use this at this point. Okay? And so if you go further down, what else do you see in San Antonio? Is there any ahas, if there's any confirmation? What's unique about San Antonio compared to Texas? You know if you were looking at Dallas, you'd be looking at different demographics, correct? Or in Austin, or in El Paso. What's unique, of, if you were just writing about San Antonio, what would you pull out and say, this is unique about San Antonio. Very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brownsville is 80, but for a population of this size to have that percentage, that says something. Okay? And it says something how you will deliver services. Won't it? Will it affect that? Okay. What else is unique about San Antonio besides it being? Um, is it growing? Yes, it's growing faster than uh, the state of Texas, which the state of Texas is considered, you know, a, you know, you guys got four congressional districts. No other state in the union got four congressional districts. So you're a fast growing state. But also for San Antonio, this growth means opportunity. But it also means challenges, right? Okay, so what else do you see? So then we, we looked at the Hispanic population. Anything else that's unique about San Antonio? Come on, you guys are storytellers. In a good way, not in the, you know, negative light. What would be your story about San Antonio? What else is important? What else do you pull out? Give me one more thing. Right, okay. Language other than English spoken at home. So it surpasses, right? almost half of the population. How do you look as far as educational attainment? Say if I was a business and I was wanting to look at the city of San Antonio, what would I look at? Would I want to know if you have bachelor's degree? And so how is San Antonio faring against the um, state of Texas? How about high school graduates? Pretty comparable, yeah. In other cities, believe me, this is, is less, let's see. So, do you see, how, though, how you can pull out information? And if you click on, for example, um, click on language other than English spoken at home. Do you see this little icon? Click on that, because the other thing about uh, census data is we always want to uh, give you more data if you need it. Okay, we always want to do that. And so if you click on the eye, what happens? Okay, click on this right here. It explains, what does it mean? What does this characteristic mean? And sometimes it's important because you may be thinking it's one thing and then it actually is something else. So you see how that works? And then also, do you see on where it says browse other set, uh, And where it says um, browse other data sets on the top to the right, it doesn't have it right here. I have to go again to start over. Okay. 
should say it in yours. Right here. You see that? Browse data sets for Texas. It should have yours on that. Do you see that? So that also, if you want more data sets about uh, state of Texas, city of San Antonio, or another community that you're looking at, then um, you could uh, click on that and that would lead you to other things. Now if you're looking at uh, Bear County, there's a lot of different uh, places in Bear County, for example, your military bases. But we'll get into that when we talk about geography. Okay, let's go now back to data. So what did you guys think about quick facts? What's nice about that fact sheet, it combines the 2010 data, population and basic characteristics for the American Community Survey, and it also gives you some information um, for the business community, like from the economic census. Yes? I do. I do. Can you repeat the question? Uh, oh, me repeat it? Okay. So what she said, thank you. What uh, she's asking is, and I, I'm first going to throw out the question to you all, okay, because I think you guys have the answer, but I, I have an answer too. But the question is, when do you know when something is significant, when a, when a percentage is significant? Like, is, is it important to say 63%? Hispanic in San Antonio. So what's your answer to that? How would you answer that? See, you didn't think you were going to have to think this morning. Darn it. Okay. What do you think? Oh. But, but what's, what's, how do you determine what's significant? Well, uh, if I'm still looking at what the state of Texas is to the San Antonio area, and the population of San Antonio is still the same as it is. So I, mean, I would say that the significant is not too wide. So you're comparing. So a comparison. Yeah, kind of but she's it. looking at like the population. Well, I mean if it's a small percentage. I mean if it's 63 and everybody else is 30, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. That's obvious. But if you're looking at, for instance, the population growth of Texas or San Antonio, and you say, you know, that was a half a percent or whatever, it's going to be 2.1 in Texas and 2.4. And I thought it was uh, San Antonio's growing. Okay, that's only a three-tenths of a percent. Okay, how about USA? We look at it here. Point nine. So what is how do, how does that help you? So in relation to the United States growth. United States growth. Mm -hmm. And remember the other thing that I that I gave you a hint about the growth of Texas. So if the growth of Texas has gained you four congressional seats, and that's based on population growth. Okay. But it's not also important that you see that population growth from one year to the next. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Year, mm -hmm. Yes. So, and this is great. I love grant writers because they always talk. Because <laughs> local governments, they, they just low stare at me. So I love talking. Because all of us learn, you see. Uh, because the important thing is, because you are trying to make comparisons. You are trying to position your community and, and state that. And you want to state it with reliability, correct? So then... When you look at the United States, that gives you a, a more perspective. So I always like to put different uh, data, and I always like a compare to what factor. Like if I'm looking at census tracts, I'm looking at neighborhoods, I want to compare it to perhaps Bear County or City of San Antonio. If I'm looking at uh, poverty rates within this uh, three census tracts in, in the west side, I want to compare it to the city of San Antonio and possibly another location in San Antonio, okay? So, because you're always looking at compared to what? Compared to Texas, compared to United States. Yes? Is it possible to put up more than two comparisons? Mm -hmm. It depends on what table you're looking at. Sometimes you have to download your tables to be able to do that, like to Excel. In this case, for the quick facts, you can't. You only can do like Texas to U USA or the city to Texas, okay? They're playing with the idea because so many people want to just go boom, boom, boom on quick facts. 
But uh, thus far, the way it looks like here is when you select like Bear County, uh, it would be Bear County to Texas. You can compare San Antonio, so you'd have to download them to do that, okay? But again, I, I really like this because it gives you context. This is, the, this is what I'm starting off with. I'm starting off with a city that, in the city, it's 63% Hispanic. In this city, it has a certain percentage. I don't know if you saw further down that it also gives you medium household income and percentage of poverty. And as you all know, in different neighborhoods that you work, you're going to see variances that. But this is your context. This is your starting point. So that's what I al always like about kit quick facts also is it gives you context. Okay? So if you, it, so in other words, like uh, an easy example is the 65% Hispanic. Well, then you know that wherever you go in your, your statistics, in your numbers, you're probably going to run into a significant amount of Hispanic. Okay, right? So that, that's just an idea. All right, so let's go to data. Thank you for the question. Let's look at population finder. That's another easy uh, search for numbers. And this is new too, the population finder. And what I like about this is population finder is, can be real helpful. Like for example, if you're looking at Bear County and you want to compare different communities, it, this one does stack. It doesn't go side to side, but it stacks. So that's real nice. And it actually will go down to the block level, a city block level, and uh, census tract level. But you have to do it out of uh, census. So let's practice a little bit with it. Okay, so select state. We don't want Alabama. I know. We want Texas. Yay. Okay, so let's go down to Lone Star State. And then anytime you want to display a geography that's in there, you just hit display. And voila. Then let's look at the table a little bit. What does it give you? So this is based on 2010. So... It will give you total population, which as you can see, Texas is a huge state, the envy of all, I'm sure. And then it gives you the population by sex and age, which I have found just knowing age groups is critical. And no matter what, if you're doing business, if you're doing social services, health, school districts, you name it. So this gives you the breakdown of the state of Texas. Then you look at ethnicity, and then you look at the population by race, okay? Now then, and it also gives you housing status as far as occupied, owner-occupied, and this is important a lot for planning. Uh, I've worked in fire departments. It's also important for people that, that are looking closely at housing stock. Okay, so while we're here, let's use this as a teaching point. So why is Hispanic not in the race category? Why is that? Can you guys tell me? Since we know that this city has 65% Hispanic, we need to understand how that's reflected in by the federal government. Okay, not just the census, it's really, dic um, I hate to use the word dictated because that's kind of negative, but it is dictated by the Office of Management and Budget for federal agencies. You might find on the state that it's different, but for federal agencies, it's guidelines, and as for census data, this is our guideline. Why is Hispanic not in the race category? What does that mean? I'm just going to pull something out while you're thinking about that. Just guess. It doesn't matter. Take a stab at it. Go ahead. Okay. That, that's the right answer. Too bad I don't have a buzzer. Bzzz. Ding. Okay, okay, when we ask the question, uh, because remember, this is based on the 2010 questionnaire and guided by o OMB, Office of Management and Budget. We first ask a question on, on those 10 questions of, are you Hispanic? So you say yes or no. And if you're Hispanic, then you say, it says, well, what origin do you self-identify yourself as? And it, you can put Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, or other. All right? So that's the first question. It's a separate question. It's looking at ethnicity, not race. So what does that mean? Hispanic is not a race. 
And there's all kinds of debates, whatever. But for right now, for your purposes, you're writing, you're examining, you're analyzing. The Hispanic is not a race. And that's why it's here. So then what does that mean, too? The second question is, okay, I checked Hispanic, if it was me. You know, if I was filling out the question. Hispanic, Mexican. Then I go down, what race are you? And I put, uh, so then you, I usually put white. Other people, the most, uh, when you look at statistics in the United States, in different regions, uh, in the south, in the west, Denver, New Mexico, Colorado, Nevada, all of those states, um, usually Hispanics will mark white or some other race, SOR. That's the most popular. And in Texas as well, because I've looked at the Texas characteristics enough. So that's more common. So you'll know, so that's why like this is a real, I use this a lot to teach because the white, it can be misleading if you don't understand this. That's why I say when you're looking at your data tables, I want you to understand it to be able to decipher what's going on in the community. So the white includes the Hispanic, right? Because they checked off either uh, white or some other race. Now if you're in a different region of the United States, like Miami, or if you're up in New York where my uh, daughters live, there's going to be some other checking going on. And so they may uh, check off black. But sometimes in New Mexico, Colorado people actually uh, check off Native American. Okay? So it just depends. So it's just important to understand those classifications so then you are able to read and interpret the data. Yes? In the quick facts, when they got the icon, drill down to mm -hmm. Repeat the question, okay. I know, I'm gonna repeat it, <laughs> I know. So her question, what is your name? Carol. Carol, I'll, I'll know all of y'all's names by, by the end. So uh, Carol asked if, so how would you know, like say if you started with Population Finder, how would you know where to go if you had a question about that? Well, in the census.gov, there's, in Fact Finder there's a glossary, but also, let's see if you can find it here. Do you see that A to Z? That I, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm in this quick situation. Subjects, that, yeah, I got it, yay. Subjects A to Z, that's also when you're on the census.gov. Subjects A to Z is a nice reference point for you all because it also will give you, like for example, you can click on H for Hispanic and then it'll go into that discussion, okay? Or any other subjects as well because you can click on, for example, P for poverty. And, on, and this is important for you all because unfortunately in this uh, part of the country, poverty rates are high. And you work with uh, neighborhoods that have high poverty rates. So when you, sometimes uh, you will be asked percentage uh, or what is the poverty threshold for a family of four. In our website, if you click on A to Z P for poverty, it has the poverty thresholds in there. Okay? So that's another tip that I just added just because of Carol's question. See, Carol, you're le making us learn a whole bunch of stuff. All right? So, so that's another reference point. So there's, you know, think of our website as just a whole bunch of tools there. So uh, the A to Z is a good reference point for you all because it gives you concepts. And you know you're asked that whenever you do annual reports, uh, community assessments, or your grants. You, you have to understand what you're writing about. Okay? All right. Further on to population finder. So again, you saw a quick uh, look at that in the state of Texas, but we want to look at areas within Texas. So let's look at a county. Let's look at Bear County. But I just want to show you some things about geography, and then we're going to look at uh, another diagram. Because for census data, it's important for you to know how we organize data when it looks at geography. So here, population finder, you see with areas within Texas are what? We first say counties and municip municipios, which is Puerto Rico, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, so counties, places, AIAN areas, which is American Indian, Alaska Native, and congressional districts. So in this case, we're going to look at counties and places. Now places, what are places? 
Um, I know it's not someone in the sense of spirit trying to be tricky, but places are either incorporated or non -incor uh, census designated places. So what does that mean? Okay, the uh, city of San Antonio is considered a place. So if you're looking for a city of San Antonio, you need to understand that we call it a place. If you're looking for Lackland Air Force Base and you want just data on Lackland Air Force Base, that's a census designated place. Okay, it's a military base. And what I've learned recently is that the bases are also census designated places. Okay, so what census designated place, like for example, two, two weeks ago I was in McAllen. McAllen and the border area there are very concerned about colonias. Some colonias are census designated places. So they're places that do not have a government, but everybody recognizes them as an entity of their own. Okay? Like, for example, uh, in San Antonio, a big example would be your, your uh, military bases, would be CDPs. Like, if you're doing a health assessment of Bear County, then you want to be aware of what the different designations are, because then you'll also look at Terrell Hills and Alma Heights. It, are those cities? They're not C CDPs, right? Because they have their own governments. So they would then go into the city under Bear County. So again, like her, if she's looking at an assessment, she wants to look at the data and how they're and contrast that. Okay. So then let's look at uh, counties. So let's select counties and search. And so then it starts going through all the counties. Do you see that? How it immediately changes that. So then let's look at bear, and then we display it. So boom. So do you see then, if you scroll down from bear, to, you still have the state of Texas. So start stacking it. So like, if I'm doing the health assessment and I'm just kind of getting my bearings, and I want to look at uh, areas within Bear County, I look at that, and what is it going to give me? And it'll give me census tracts, OK? So we're not ready just yet for census tracts. We'll go back to it in just a minute. Let's look go areas within the state of Texas if we want to look at a city. So now we're going to go to places because I want to look at some uh, places. Okay? So search. And so then it starts. This is the wild part because Texas is so big and there's so many places. It gives you all the places in Texas. So that gets a little clumsy. So here's Alamo Heights, right? Display. And, and you can play with it however you want. You can just go at San Antonio. But I'm just giving you a. Uh, so then San Antonio's going to be way down there. Let me get my little cosita here. So if I went in to go San Antonio, hopefully this is easier for you and you don't have a crick in your neck. So do you find San Antonio? Did I miss it? Probably. So you can see, you can put a number. There we go, San Antonio City. Display. What happened? Alert. Texas has been added already. Okay. No, what happened? Display. Oh, hit the wrong one. There we go, San Antonio. And then you can go on, like if you wanted to look at, say, um, Lackland. So do you get the, the point, all right? So then, as you can see, you can look again, and it's the same screen for each one. What do you guys think of this? Good? It's nice, because like I said, you can stack it. And let me just show you one other feature, and then I want to talk about how to download and all that. OK, so then if I look at Aries within Texas, see, if I wanted to look at the census tract level, I would have to go back to Aries within so I looked at San Antonio and give you an example. You could also see here, San Antonio, and then you see how it's stacking, right? You see the population within Alamo Heights compared to San Antonio. And then the only thing I don't like, and it's a limitation, is that when they give you like the Hispanic and the race data, for it to be really easy, I would have liked them to put the percentages. But nobody asked me why. I don't know. So that would have been lovely. <laughs>
sometimes the people who design things aren't necessarily the people that use it and teach it, so they, they, they forget about certain things. But I will forgive them, because we still have a good uh, population finder. Okay, so then I went back to counties, and to get the census tract, I have to go back to counties. There, there's no other way. So I go back to Bear County and display it. Oh, I don't have to display it. I just go areas for them. So then here, the census tract. And then I search. So then it'll give me all the census tracts in Bear County. Okay? I happen to know, because I already did the search, that later on we're going to look at census tract 1919. Okay, so I, I already know this because I, I did a geocode of an address. So it's 1919. So it's way down here, of course. But this is one of the, the limitations is that you have to know your census tract to get it in this fast data. And it's not just plain old 1919. There we are. Okay. And then uh, display. Okay? But this helps you to see. So then I'm down to the census tract. It's 4922. Then it gives you uh, a division of where that is. Okay? Now then again, you're saying, but you have to know your census tract. Okay? So that is a limitation of that. I, I already did the search before I went back there. So that's that's a limitation. But if you do know it, uh, and we're going to talk about how to get that, uh, it is a good way to look at different areas, neighborhoods. But otherwise, too, if you're looking, like say, for example, you're, you're looking at a whole area like Bear County, and you want to put all the CDPs and compare CDPs, the military bases, you want to put, and then you, you too, because you, you look citywide, correct? You want to know what the difference is in populations. Uh, and you have a race ethnic background at least and you do have the population so you can kind of get a sense of you know what is the population of it, each of these communities okay now then how do I download this thing so one thing say for example if you're working for the team and you're doing the assessment and you've already done all this uh, work and said this is Bear County and I want to give you just a, a sense you can just put after you've built it how you want it you can you see that link to this page you can just send a link by email. And they can link it and they'll, it'll be right there, all right? The other thing too is you can print it. I mean, obviously. But you can also print it, it, it to, I forgot what was the actual program, but I think Microsoft allows you to print it to, I think, iNotes. It, it's a certain program, but most you know, uh, company organizations, computers will allow you to print it as um, electronically, okay? so that you can uh, send it as well if you don't want to do the paper because I know all of you are very green. And, okay, so, um, so that's a good way to download, but I always, I like the link as well and it works very well, okay? Any questions about that? Again, this is very quick, this is just a summary. Were you able to follow that? Did I go through that too quick? Everybody was? Okay, so everybody looked like they were following along, but if not, say, or whatever, okay? All right, so that's Population Finder Quick Facts. Let's now start drilling down to more detail. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, okay, so we're going back to data. And now we're going to the updated American Fact Finder. So American Fact Finder is where you can get all, that is our Google, our uh, data tool. So let's go ahead and click on that. Okay. So have any of you used the, the American Fact Finder? Look at this page. Okay. So what I like about American Fact Finder is, again, here we go. Here's some navigation caps. Main search, what we provide using Fact Finder. And unless you know, these all have, or you stumble upon it, these all have uh, reference points behind them. Okay, here we go. Where's our, where's our handy dandy little mouse? Let's first look at, um, this of course is the main page. So 
so remember what I said about filters. These are filters right here, okay? And this is our shopping cart. And so I'm gonna refer a lot to topics, geographies, and your selections, okay? That's, it was actually designed just like if you were on Amazon or whatever, shopping, and then you clicked on something, a book you wanted to be, you know, cleaner, I don't know, hopefully something more interesting. And you select it, and it goes to a selection box. That's how it was designed. And uh, so then these are your filters. And lo and behold, here's Quick Facts. So this is another way to search for Quick Facts. And that's the other thing, too. When you're dealing with census tract, there's always more one way to, to search. Okay? I, s I sometimes say to skin the kitty, but then everybody gets offended if they're cat owners. So I don't want to say that. Okay. So anyway, Quick Facts is here. And then you have popular searches. We're going to look at topics and geographies. This right here, Quick Start. Quick Start is uh, a real easy way if you have a topic and a state or country in you know, a place like San Antonio and you have a topic, you, that is a good way to just get started uh, in your search. Address search, we're going to do this today through a, a certain street address and it geocodes it and you learn about what uh, that address, it'll tell you what census tract it is, what school district, what legislative district just by putting in that street address, okay? And then the data release schedule, we update data all the time uh, for American Community Survey, which we'll be working with. Actually, tomorrow's a release date. We're gonna release the one-year estimates. Yay, Stephanie's excited, woohoo! <laughs> so tomorrow we're going to update our one-year estimates and then in October, the three and the five. More about that later, okay? And then we also have reference maps up here, okay? So up here, these little navigation tabs, in case you, you lose your notes that you wrote today, these are good. And also, if you're going to go back and train some staff about how to use this website, which would be good. We have different little navigation tabs. They talk about, so then we have just little, little tips, how do you search for tables and other files in American Fact Finder right here. And then what's in here is what we provide. So it tells you what data. It tells you what data is on here, but also where it says get data, you click on that and you actually can go and start a, a data search. So again, all these other ways to apply data. And then using Fact Finder. So this is, I like this particular tab because it actually tells you about different uh, ways, okay, the quick start, an easy way to find data, which you just said, using search, search results, viewing a table, and then about uh, census geography, and need additional assistance. I wish they'd have that for every aspect of life. Parenting, need additional assistance? Yes. How do we get our daughter in school? No. Okay, so need additional assistance. Help, glossary, frequently asked questions. So the glossary is, uh, is also here, or here. So the glossary is another, like in A to Z was one way, but glossary as far as specific terms, like what's a quick table? Um, what is a household? Those are good in the glossary. Okay, so that's another reference point. Because we have all these uh, census terms that you need to understand. Frequently asked questions is not bad. Frequently asked questions are nice because, say for example, you're going through a search, and you think, well, someone else may have asked this question. That's what's in there, okay? But I also will give you a data request line. That will send you to a real life person. But those are good reference points as well, all right? So then let's go back to me. Luckily, you don't have a little cosita like I do. But go ahead and go to me. Here we go, where is it? Woo -hoo. Me, I know. The people for the, what's this called? Now Tech, Now Data? or see now, uh, they love me because I make weird sounds. Okay, so then now we're gonna do, we're gonna do our first search with Census 2010 data. It's gonna be a more detailed search of what we just looked at in Population Finder, okay? So our first filter we're gonna look at is geography. All right, so start your engines. Let's click on geographies. And it's gonna say, okay, where do you wanna search? I like to go to name rather than the default of list because Texas is so big and you, you end up going down and down and down. So let's go to name. 
What will that do? We can just, I'm going to look at San Antonio. Okay? I hope I'm typing correctly. Am I? Good. Okay, so then it'll bring up a whole bunch of San Antonios, but we want San Antonio City, Texas. Do you see that? Let's go ahead and click on that. So it should read, I'm filtering for San Antonio City, Texas, a uh, fact finder, and I want you to go there. Okay? So San Antonio City, Texas, hit go, and then it should say, oh, okay, I know where that is, and then it gives you choices. And so it should be, come up with your first choice of San Antonio City, a place within a state. That's what I'm wanting. Everybody get there? See? See or no? Okay, San Antonio. So then we say yes, we want that. And let's add it to what? Our selection box, yes. Okay, so now we have our geography. And for today, we're just going to look at San Antonio City. But keep in mind, if you're doing a, a lot of different geographies you want to look at, like say if you're looking at San Antonio, then you're looking at Lackland, you're looking at different, you can keep adding. Okay, so just for today, we're just going to look at San Antonio City. So then, this is, every time you select and use a geography filter, you've got to close that box, or else you won't get to tables. Okay, so does everybody see that close box? Again, nobody asked me about this, but I would have not designed it this way. Oh well. So then we're here, and hopefully it says profile DP1. So we're going to click on it. So demographic profile 1 is an overview based on 2010 of San Antonio City. So did everybody check that? DP1, and then you view it. I want to view this table. So I filtered through my geography, I picked the product I wanted, which is demographic profile one, and then I wanted to view it. Now then, if you would have picked a whole bunch of other geographies, or if you're looking at a lot of different census tracts, see where it says geography? It would show up there, okay? So again, it's not side by side. You'd have to go to the next table. But so once you click it, then it would show you the next one, okay? You'd have to download it to do side by side, which is, would be better. Okay, so this, as you can see, is much more detailed than what you looked at before. This is another really good way. I find 2010 census data is complementary to what I look at in the social economic because you have to get a sense of, you know, what's the population count? How many people is, does this represent? Okay, like how many children in the neighborhood? This is like the how many part, okay? And then... So you look through, and then I hope you will tell me some things that you find, again, unique or surprises in San Antonio. And I'm going through this. I want to digest the data. I'm just going to it fast because I have this little quirky thing. So first of all, it goes through what's the population, which you found out late before. Then it goes through, sorry about this. So it goes through the medium age. First of the general population, then you look at male, female, right? So any surprises there so far? Any aha moments? What's really great is when you get down to the census tract level, you really see a lot of differences too. That's really amazing. And then also, uh, you can, in, for 2010, you can even get down to the city block level where you see 26 people there, and then you see uh, the characteristics of that. So again, if you're delivering services and you're wanting to be effective, it's important to know about your population, right? So, any particular age group important in San Antonio? That comes out more when you look at the smaller areas or if you're looking at a different part uh, or a smaller community. Like if I was looking at Terrell Hills, would this all be different? Numbers, everything? Yeah. If I was looking at Lackland, what would probably be there? A lot of males? Some females? What would be the, you would probably see a change in the male-female ratio, perhaps? Medium age might be different. So do you see how you, it really kind of 
start to really looking at the difference. So let's look at, I'm trying to look at households. So what am I doing? Okay, I'm wanting to go down, not up. So bear with me, my little tricky little mouse here. So female population. I feel like I'm at, you know, when you start a card, it won't start, it's like, rrr, rrr. that's how I am with this little mouse. Okay, so you saw also where it really gets into detail about race, right? And now for the first time we were able to, here's the, some other race, so some people did identify like that. Total population, so white is here, 72.6. See, if you didn't know what you now know, you'd think, what? San Antonio's uh, 72.6 white, right? You'd say, what's all the fiestas about? No, but then you know this and you go down further. And you look at an ethnic breakdown, okay? So then you start seeing the complexion of, of what's here, Hispanic or Latino, 63. And then what do most people claim as their origin here? in San Antonio. Mexican, right. And then you have some other. But I think it's important also that this community is more diverse than people realize. Because look at your black or African American, 7.7. .7. Okay, now Houston would be different. I realize that. But there are segments, and then certain uh, places in San Antonio would be different, correct? And then relationship. Okay, what what is all this stuff about relationships? What do we care who's related to who? Why is that important? What's a household? There's two kinds of households recognized by the census. You could say crazy, non crazy. No, that's not the answer. <laughs> There's probably ninety percent of households are crazy. So it's a family or non family. Okay? So related or non-related. And there's a very good, actually good description about uh, household and family and relationships. Because, and why you want to know that is, wha is what? For housing, if I'm a business person, I want to know what's in that household. If I'm a school district, you know, because some populations are more vulnerable than other. For example, uh, here, householder, and then it says total households, family households, and then it says house, husband and wife, and then female householder, no husband present. What do we know about certain households? Like this one in particular, at the very end here. What do we know about female householder, no husband present households, which are 17.8% of the population of the city of San Antonio? They're more vulnerable for poverty. But you have right female householder. That's it. That's pretty well known, and you'll see more evidence of it later. The other thing too is, do you see here where it says group quarters? Group quarters. Like yesterday, I was asked the question: Well, why doesn't the population households add up to the actual population? Because group quarters is a whole other count that we do in a city. In the city of San Antonio, we would be counting um, people. Group quarters are people who live there most of the time, for example, um, your, your bases, military bases. Well, you may have military housing in their single households, but we actually go to the uh, commander and say, we're gonna conduct the census, so we need your cooperation. They usually appoint a person who works with us to count people who live there most of the time, who are stationed most of the time at the, at the base. Okay, so that's one example. Now there's college dorms. Uh, if they live there most of the time and their parents are not claiming them, okay? Uh, it cannot be people like uh, incarcerated populations have to be more like that are live there most of the time, like they're doing lengths of years there, not the overnight DWI, okay? So, it's pe so that's another population. Now you're gonna ask me, well, how about the homeless? Homeless is another count that we do at a certain specific time period over like 24 to 48 hours where we actually work with providers. We don't act that they, they will be at that certain time that day we're taking um, a picture of what providers will tell us. We're, we're gonna count the population there, okay? 
So then we have how many households? What else is there of interest? Let's see, again, if you're looking at health care, you're wanting to know female 65 years and over, because that has health issues, male 65 years and old, older, average family size, and then it, there's living alone with own children. So a lot of information. And then we also get into housing occupancy, housing tenure. And people in housing, but also like when I do public safety or do fire departments, they want to know the quality. Do we have a lot of vacant units? And then don't forget about these notes because they really do give you some good descriptions. We were talking about reference points. Like it says here, uh, family households, what are they? Because yesterday I was asked a good question about um, gay households. How were they counted? So it, it, it explains here. Family households consist of a householder and one or more other people related to the householder by birth, marriage, or adoption. They do not inc include same-sex married couples, even if the marriage was performed in state issuing. So it goes on, so that's a real good description, okay? So that's, again, important to understand uh, what are, are we referring to as families. One other thing before we go on break, sources. You know, they're going to ask you, well, how'd you get that number? Uh, to the Census Bureau? Okay, but where? Well, you use U.S. Census Bureau 2010 Census, okay? Always at the end of our tables, we always have the source because we have different data sets and you want to know what they are. So in this case, our data set that we're using is 2010 census based on numbers. And then the American Community Survey is based on a sample, which we're going to get into after the uh, break. So it's important for you all to understand that the citation is the end because you want to have reliable numbers, reliable sources, and you want to see that you know what you're talking about. Correct? Is that good? Yeah. So, because I've actually, my husband brought home a PowerPoint uh, he w he's in housing, and um, he brought home a PowerPoint from a consultant that was paid a lot of money by uh, the city. And, um, and all his PowerPoint, he just put the survey, the survey, he never made mention of American Community Survey, so it could be anything. And I said, wow, I, I would have not accepted that. So anyway, no one asked me. So we're ready for a break. You ready kind of to shake a little bit of the cobwebs? So how do we do? Are we able to keep up? Is this good so far? Okay.